so today we are in the kitchen and I'm going to be showing you how to pasteurize goat's milk in Instapot and I'm also going to be showing you how to make a chevre cheese. Alright, so you're going to need pint jars. I'm doing a gallon at a time, or half a gallon at a time, sorry. So I have four pint jars. You're going to need four lids, one cup of water, and your Instapot. So, I have my half a gallon of milk. So I'm just gonna shake it up to get everything mixed together. You don't need new lids because you're not gonna be sealing them. So you could just use any lids you have laying around. So you're gonna fill up your pine jars. Got the four jars filled up. So now you're gonna take your mince pot and you're gonna want the white rack in it, and then you're gonna take your one cup of water and you're gonna pour that into the bottom of the insta pot. And then you're going to take the four pint jars of milk and place them into the basket. See, I think four will fit in here. Yes, four fits perfect. All right, so then you're going to put the lid on your instant pot. Right, so you get the lid on and you want to make sure that the vent is sealed and then we're going to put it on steam for one minute setting still on there from last time and then that's on so now we're just going to wait till it runs through its cycle and then after it runs through that steam cycle for one minute, you're going to let it a natural um, steam on its own. You're not going to manual steam it. So you're just going to let it depressurize on its own. So when I say you have to naturally let it release the pressure, that means that you don't turn this valve when it's done. You just let the steam naturally come out. Mommy. So how you know it's depressurized is this little stopper here. So if it's down, that means it is at a pressure release state. And if it's up, that means it's pressurized. All right, so now the valve is down. So that means the pressure is released. So now you just take your lid off. Take your cans out. Be careful, they're very hot. And now you have pasteurized milk. All right, so now I just have to do the other half gallon of milk and then I'll show you how to make the chevre goat's milk cheese. So now I'm going to be making the chevre goat's milk cheese. All right, so this is everything you're gonna need to make the chevre. So we got the chevre culture, a slotted spoon, and then one gallon of milk. So this is the milk I pasteurized. I just poured it into this large stock pot mm -hmm. 
So first, according to the package, we need to heat one gallon of goat's milk to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're gonna wanna do this in a hot bath. All right, so I'm filling the sink up with hot water and then I'm gonna put the pot in the sink and that's how I'm gonna heat the milk up. All right, so now the goat's milk is at 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're gonna do is take our culture packet. And we're just gonna sprinkle it on top of the milk and let it rehydrate for two minutes. All right, so now that the two minutes is up, we're just gonna mix that in. I'm just gonna take my slatted spoon and go in up and down motions. By letting the culture rehydrate, it just avoids any clumps in your milk. So now we're just gonna cover that and let it sit for 12 hours. So it's 9 p.m. right now. So in 12 hours, that would be 9 a.m. So at 9 a.m., what we have to do is ladle the curd into a muslin cloth or a cheesecloth, and then you're gonna hang it to dry to four to eight hours, depending on what um, consistency you like your cheese. So we like a moisture cheese, so we do it for less time, which is four hours. If you like a drier, tangier cheese, then you would do it for a longer amount of time. All right, so you know if it's done, if it starts to pull away from the sides. And also, if you put a knife in it, it'll cut right through it. You see that curd? So now I just have a cheesecloth in a strainer and I'm going to strain the curd into the cheesecloth. depending on what consistency you like your cheese. So I'm just gonna please out some of that whey. Right, so this is the setup I'm using for a bowl, the banana rack. Yes. 
And then I'm just going to take a piece of string and tie this on to here. And I just put a bowl under it to catch all the way. They, so they also make chevre molds that look like this and they have little holes in them to drain out all the way. Some people prefer to use these so instead of putting them in the cheesecloth you can drain them in this. But I like to drain it in the cheesecloth first and then after it's to the desired consistency I like to put them in the molds. So this is what the cheese looks like after it's done draining. And next we're going to add the salt. 